what do we do with constants? I mean, so far we've been tweaking x. x is our little knob that we adjust, and then y is the thing that changes. Now there's two ways that we can bring constants into the equation. Uh, we can add them or we can multiply by them. So let's look at uh, let's look at adding first. Let's say we've got y equals x cubed plus 5. How does having that 5 affect y when we tweak x? And just, let's just run it through from scratch like we did before. So we'll we'll add dy to the left, so now we have y changing by some amount dy, and we'll change x by some amount dx, okay? And so that new x, that whole new x gets cubed, and we add on 5. Uh, as before, we get rid of all the itsy bitsy teensy weensy tiny whiny, and we just keep the itsy bitsy. And then now, y from the left, x cubed plus 5 on the right, we end up with dy equals 3x squared times dx. Bring the dx on the right over to the left, and now we've got dy by dx equals 3x squared, which is exactly what we would have gotten if we had just started with y equals x cubed. It didn't have to be 5. It could have been, like, just about anything, really, as long as it's constant. If y equals x cubed plus c, where c is just some unchanging number, a constant, then dy by dx is always going to be 3x squared. Let's multiply by a constant. So again, let's start with something familiar, y equals x squared, except now it's y equals 7x squared. And we'll do as before. We'll adjust x by a small amount, dx. That will do something to y uh, by a small amount dy. Our new x squared all gets multiplied by 7. Now what do we do with that 7 dx squared? 7 of almost nothing is still almost nothing. So now we remove the original y on the left, 7x squared on the right, and look what we end up with. dy equals 14x times dx. Scoot the dx uh, over to the other side and we've got dy by dx is 14x. Let's take a closer look at this example. We'll set up a table with some sample x's and the corresponding y's when y equals 7 times x squared. And then we'll use our dy by dx equals 14x to work out the dy by dx for each of these. And then now we'll plot each of these points. And Let's have a look. Here's our original curve going from left to right, and here's our new curve, what we would call our derivative curve. We derived it from the original curve. So our derived curve, you work out the slope, it's, it's a straight line, it's 14x. And our original curve is y equals 7x squared. The height of our new curve is proportional to the slope of the original curve. And you'll notice that when we go through the origin, the original curve slopes negatively. And look at the value of the derived curve. Those values are all negative. We had just differentiated uh, x squared using our power rule, we'd get 2x. So our new derivative is 7 times that. And if we had started out with 8x squared, it would be 8 times that derivative. And if we, we had ax squared, it would be a times that derivative. So we will modify our power rule to look like this. If our original curve is y equals a times x to the n, then our derived curve, our dy by dx curve, is going to be a times n x to the power of n minus 1. And that's going to be true for division too, because really division is only multiplying by a fraction. Division by 7 is multiplying by 1 7th. So next time we're going to delve into some more examples of this. And in the meantime, check out these other videos. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up.